The movie begins by showing a man named Wade Porter. He was an ordinary guy with a regular job, and he lived with his girlfriend, Laura, and their son, Michael. Wade and Laura wanted to borrow money for their wedding and also start a business with some investment. Laura was overjoyed when Wade managed to secure a loan from the bank to make their dreams come true. One night, a strange noise jolted Wade awake from his slumber. He nudged Laura and grabbed a baseball bat as they hurriedly went to check on their son, Michael. Thankfully, Michael was safe and sound in his room. Wade asked Laura to stay with Michael while he cautiously searched the house for the intruder. As he entered the kitchen, out of nowhere, the intruder attacked him. The intruder then dashed out of the house. Wade instinctively chased after him and, in the heat of the moment, struck the intruder on the head with the baseball bat, unintentionally causing his death. Wade was overwhelmed with guilt for inadvertently taking someone's life. Soon enough, the police arrived at the scene, and one of the officers believed Wade had made a mistake by confronting the intruder outside the house, which might not be considered self-defense. To make matters worse, it was discovered that the intruder hadn't stolen anything from their home. Wade and Laura desperately tried to defend his actions, but the police still arrested Wade. He was charged with murder because he had attacked an unarmed intruder outside the house. On Wade's first day in prison, he found himself in a troubling situation. He unintentionally upset a fellow inmate named Tinto, who took offense when Wade accidentally looked at him the wrong way. Even though Wade had no ill intentions, it led to trouble. While in the holding cell, Wade was surrounded by intimidating inmates who made him feel scared and out of place because he was new to the prison. The following day, Laura went to visit Wade in prison. She told him that their son kept asking about him and reassured him that she would find a good lawyer to help him get out of prison. A woman, who would become Wade's public defender, approached him. She explained that he might face a few years in prison and a hefty fine, possibly up to $1 million. Wade admitted he didn't have that kind of money. However, his public defender promised to do her best to clear his name of all charges. That night, chaos erupted at San Quentin prison. Inmates became unruly, attacking each other and creating sparks that led the guards to release tear gas to regain control. The next day, a man named Gordon visited the prison to meet one of the inmates, John Smith. Gordon informed John that he would spend the rest of his life behind bars due to his involvement in the previous night's riots at San Quentin. However, John seemed indifferent to Gordon's words. He just wanted to celebrate his late son's birthday. John had lost his family in a tragic incident and no longer seemed to care about his own life. He had taken revenge on the person responsible for his wife and children's deaths, leading to his imprisonment. Meanwhile, the scene shifted back to Wade, who was visited once again by his public defender. She suggested that he could receive a lighter sentence and a reduced fine if he admitted his guilt. Wade felt he had no other choice but to follow her advice, leading him to plead no contest in exchange for a three-year sentence for involuntary manslaughter. On the way to prison, a man named Jake, sitting behind Wade, told him about a very dangerous prisoner on the bus named Danny Sampson, warning Wade to be careful around him. Soon after, Sampson suddenly got up and attacked another prisoner, stabbing him with a knife. Then he handed the bloody knife to Jake. In a moment of fear, Jake hid the knife under Wade's chair and threatened him to keep quiet about the stabbing or Sampson would harm him. As a result, Wade was placed in solitary confinement while the authorities investigated the stabbing. Lieutenant Jackson questioned Wade about the incident, but Wade refused to cooperate. Lieutenant Jackson decided to transfer Wade to the security housing unit, which he supervised. This unit housed high-profile criminals sentenced to death or life imprisonment. Inmates there were locked in their cells for 23 hours a day, and they couldn't have visitors for the first three months. One day, Wade was escorted by the guards to an area where several large and tough-looking prisoners had gathered. Soon, a fight broke out between two inmates, and no one tried to stop them. It turned out these two convicts were engaged in a gladiatorial-style battle, which Lieutenant Jackson and the other guards watched from a distance while making bets. However, after the fight, the prison guards fired rubber bullets to stop the two prisoners. One of them, frustrated by Lieutenant Jackson's rules, openly rebelled and expressed his anger. 
the guards took this prisoner to a room, where Lieutenant Jackson brutally beat him. A few days later, Laura visited Wade in prison again. She missed him a lot since they hadn't seen each other in three months. Laura confessed that she had run out of money to support herself and their son. Wade suggested selling their property to make ends meet while he was still incarcerated. John, who had received a life sentence for causing trouble at San Quentin State Prison, was eventually transferred to Wade's prison, becoming his cellmate in the security housing unit. John immediately tried to intimidate Wade, but Wade tried to avoid any conflict with him. The next day, they were called to the courtyard, where other inmates had gathered. Wade was reunited with Jake, who informed him that Samson was grateful that Wade hadn't reported his actions on the bus. On the other hand, John seemed to be familiar with some of the inmates, and they greeted him with reluctance and respect. It turned out that John had quite a reputation as a troublemaker in various prisons, which led to him being transferred from one prison to another several times. Because of his extensive experience behind bars, John started giving Wade some valuable advice on how to survive in prison. One day, Wade found himself in a fight against another inmate named Turner. Initially, Wade was struggling, but he managed to turn the tables and defeat Turner. When a young officer named Collins was about to use a rubber bullet on Wade, Lieutenant Jackson intervened and ordered Collins to shoot Turner instead. Collins seemed unsure, so Lieutenant Jackson grabbed his rifle and shot Turner himself. Wade was puzzled by Lieutenant Jackson's unusual behavior in shooting Turner instead of him. John explained casually that the guards make the rules in prison, and they can act as they please. One day, an investigator named Hammond visited the prison for a routine inspection. Hammond questioned why there were still so many fights in a prison under Lieutenant Jackson's management. To avoid raising further suspicion, Lieutenant Jackson tried to convince Hammond that he could handle the inmates effectively and promised to work harder to reduce conflicts among the prisoners. Wade had another visit from Laura, and this time she brought their son, Michael, with her. Michael was thrilled to see his father, whom he had missed so much. During their visit, Laura disclosed that their money had run out, and she was facing tough times. Wade reassured his girlfriend and suggested selling their house to make ends meet. He promised Laura that he would make her and Michael happy once he was released from prison because his family meant everything to him. After Laura and Michael's visit, Jake approached Wade and asked him to participate in a fight in the prison yard. When Wade refused, Jake ordered his men to attack him. Witnessing the turmoil, the guards released tear gas to break up the inmates who were attacking Wade. John, who had been trying to help Wade by taking on Jake's men, scolded Wade for being careless and not following Jake's orders. It turned out that Jake was a gangster, much like Samson. The scene then shifts to Laura, who was going through documents. She planned to sell their house to make ends meet and live with her mother for a while. One day, Wade was summoned to meet Samson in the prison yard, where Jake was also present. Jake complained to Samson that Wade had defied his orders, which greatly angered him. Unexpectedly, Samson ordered his henchmen to eliminate Jake and then extended an offer to Wade to join his group. Back in their cell, Wade turned to John for advice on whether he should accept Samson's offer or decline it. John advised Wade to accept the offer because Samson was a powerful figure in the prison. The following day, Lieutenant Jackson and Sergeant Roberts watched their children's baseball game from the sidelines. During the game, Roberts expressed his concerns to Lieutenant Jackson about the risk of losing their jobs due to their frequent mistreatment and abuse of inmates. Roberts also suggested that Lieutenant Jackson start following the prison rules and cease the torture of prisoners. However, Lieutenant Jackson remained determined to continue his rule-breaking ways in prison, believing that his actions would go unnoticed. One night, Wade asked John why he had spared his family's killers. John explained that he had deliberately kept them alive while taking revenge on their families to make them experience the pain of losing everyone they loved. Laura returned to visit Wade in prison, and she broke down in tears as she shared her struggles with him. She couldn't bear living in poverty and having to provide for their son alone. She left abruptly, leaving Wade feeling furious. While gathering with other prisoners in the yard, Wade was suddenly attacked by the newcomer. Since Wade didn't retaliate, Lieutenant Jackson became irritated and fired a rubber bullet at the assailant. 
Lieutenant Jackson questioned Wade about Samson's stabbing incident, but Wade remained silent, fearing Samson's threats. When Wade refused to identify Samson as the attacker on the bus, Lieutenant Jackson falsely testified that Wade was involved in the murder, resulting in an additional three-year sentence. Encouraged by her mother, Laura ended her relationship with Wade through a letter. Wade, heartbroken and enraged, started fighting other prisoners. John advised him not to let his anger get the best of him, but Wade didn't care anymore because he had lost all hope when Laura decided to leave him. The following day, Gordon visited John in prison, and John finally asked his friend to stop visiting him, seeing it as a futile effort. The scene then shifts to Laura, who is packing their belongings with her mother's help. As she's about to move Wade's things, their son, Michael, suddenly appears and asks his mother why they're packing his father's stuff like that. Laura tries to explain to Michael that they won't be living with Wade anymore. Michael is heartbroken upon hearing this news because he loves his father dearly and wants him to stay with them. Realizing how much Michael loves Wade and how difficult this is for him, Laura decides to return to the prison to tell Wade that she'll wait for him until he's released for the sake of their son. Wade is overjoyed when he hears Laura's decision because he deeply loves her and their son and hopes to reunite with them. He shares the good news with John upon returning to their cell. Together, they come up with a plan to expose the truth about the violence in the prison, which might lead to Wade's release. Wade initiates the plan by asking Lieutenant Jackson for permission to fight a new inmate recently transferred to the security housing unit, who happens to be Tinto. Wade claims he wants revenge because Tinto had bullied him. Lieutenant Jackson agrees to let Wade fight Tinto, but imposes one condition. The fight must be to the death. On the other hand, Wade asked Laura to meet with Gordon because, as per John's advice, Gordon could help uncover the injustices carried out by Lieutenant Jackson in the prison. Finally, the day of the battle arrived. Wade and Tinto engaged in a fierce fight, with Wade struggling to hold his own. Meanwhile, Laura and Gordon were en route to the prison with Investigator Hammond, aiming to expose Lieutenant Jackson's arbitrary actions. John seemed prepared with a homemade weapon hidden behind his glasses, watching from the sidelines. After a tough battle, Wade managed to gain the upper hand and incapacitate Tinto. However, he refused to kill Tinto after defeating him, which greatly angered Lieutenant Jackson. When Lieutenant Jackson was about to shoot Wade, unexpectedly, John stepped in to shield Wade, and other inmates followed suit. Lieutenant Jackson contemplated shooting all the prisoners, but Roberts tried to calm him down and warned him against acting recklessly due to the severe consequences it could bring. As a result, Lieutenant Jackson ordered the prisoners to be returned to their cells. As John and Wade returned to their cell, a guard suddenly appeared and escorted them back to the prison yard. In the yard, Lieutenant Jackson stood ready to harm Wade, but Roberts decided not to witness Wade's impending fate and distanced himself. Meanwhile, Collins discreetly reactivated the surveillance cameras, hoping to capture evidence of Lieutenant Jackson's mistreatment of the prisoners on CCTV footage. Just as Lieutenant Jackson was about to carry out his plan, John took swift action by slitting his throat. However, another prison officer shot John, and he succumbed to his injuries. Collins then pressed the emergency button, summoning other guards to the scene. Simultaneously, Laura and Gordon arrived with Investigator Hammond. With Gordon and Laura's assistance, Investigator Hammond exposed Lieutenant Jackson's corrupt and oppressive actions, leading to Wade's additional sentence being overturned. After spending 15 months in prison, Wade was finally released and joyfully reunited with Laura and Michael. So, the moral of the story is if you ever find yourself in prison, make sure your cellmate is a guy named John. He's got all the survival tips and knows how to take down corrupt prison guards.